Hello, hello, and welcome to another Teen Talk Tuesday. My name is Miss Lindsay, and today I will be reading a book that might have a sensitive, tough topic to talk about. Speak by Laurie Hulse Anderson. Now, before I get started, I want to talk to you a little bit. This is a book that deals with the subject of being silent, harassed, and the feeling of being alone. But I want you to know, you are never alone. There is always someone out there for you. And never be afraid to speak. Here we go. Welcome to Merryweather High. It is my first morning of high school. I have seven new notebooks, a skirt I hate, and a stomach ache. The school bus wheezes to my corner. The door opens and I step up. It, I am the first pickup of the day. <clears throat> the driver pulls away from the curb while I stand in the aisle. Where to sit? I've never been a backseat waste case. If I sit in the middle, a stranger could sit next to me. If I sit in the front, it'll make me look like a little kid. But I figure it's the best chance I have to make eye contact with one of my friends, if any of them have decided to talk to me yet. The bus picks up students in groups of four or five. As they walk down the aisle, People who were my middle school lab partners or gym buddies glare at me. I close my eyes. This is what I've been dreading. As we leave the last stop, I am the only person sitting alone. The driver downshifts to drag us over the hills. The engine clanks, which makes the guys in the back holler something obscene. Someone is wearing too much cologne. I try to open my window, but the little latches won't move. A guy behind me unwraps his breakfast and shoots the wrapper at the back of my head. It bounces into my lap. A ho-ho. We pass janitors painting over the sign in front of the high school. The school board has decided that Merryweather High, home of the Trojans, didn't send a strong abstinence message. so. They transformed us into the Blue Devils. Better the devil you know than the Trojan you don't, I guess. School colors will stay purple and gray. The board didn't want to spring for new uniforms. Older students are allowed to roam into the bell, but ninth graders are herded into the auditorium. We fall into clans. Jocks, country clubbers, Idiot savants, cheerleaders, human waste, Euro trash, future fascists of America, big hair chicks, the Marthas, suffering artists, thespians, goths, shredders. I am clanless. I wasted the last weeks of August watching bad cartoons. I didn't go to the mall, the lake, or the pool or answer the phone. I have entered high school with the wrong hair, the wrong clothes, the wrong attitude, and I don't have anyone to sit with. I am outcast. There is no point in looking for my ex-friends. Our clan, the Plain Janes, have splintered and the pieces are being absorbed by rival fractions. Nicole lounges with the jocks, comparing scars from summer league sports. Ivy floats between the surfer, the suffering artist, on one side of the aisle, and the thespians on the other. She has enough personality to travel with two packs. Jessica has moved to Nevada. No real loss. She was mostly Ivy's friend anyway. The kids behind me laugh so loud I know they're laughing about me. I can't help myself. I turn around. It's Rachel, 
surrounded by a bunch of kids wearing clothes that most definitely did not come from the East Side Mall. Rachel Bruin, my ex-best friend. She stares at something above my left ear. Words climb up my mouth. This was the girl who suffered through brownies with me, who taught me how to swim, who understood about my parents, who didn't make fun of my bedroom. If there is anyone in the entire galaxy I'm dying to tell what really happened, it's Rachel. My throat burns. Her eyes meet mine for a second. I hate you, she mouths silently. She turns her back to me and laughs with her friends. I bite my lip. I'm not going to think about it. It was ugly, but it's over. And I'm not going to think about it. My lip bleeds a little. It tastes like metal. I need to sit down. I stand in the center aisle of the auditorium, a wounded zebra in a National Geographic special, looking for someone, anyone, to sit next to. A predator approaches. Great jock, buzz cut, whistle around a neck thicker than his head, probably a social studies teacher hired to coach a blood sport. Mr. Neck, sit. I grab a seat. Another wounded zebra turns and smiles at me. She's packing at least five grand worth of orthodontia, but has great shoes. I'm Heather from Ohio, she says. I'm new here. Are you? I don't have time to answer. The lights dim and the indoctrination begins. The first 10 lies they tell you in high school. We are here to help you. You will have enough time to get to your class before the bell rings. The dress code will be enforced. No smoking is allowed on school grounds. Our football team will win the championship this year. We expect more of you here. Guidance counselors are always available to listen. Your schedule was created with your needs in mind. Your locker combination is private. These will be the years you look back on fondly. My first class is biology. I can't find it and get my first demerit for wandering the halls. It is 8.50 in the morning. Only 699 days and seven class periods until graduation. And that was chapter one of Speak by Lori Hulse Anderson. If you're interested in checking this out, please call your local library. Thank you very much for joining me today, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.